Hello everyone and welcome back to another session of Dark Souls 3 PvP and another weapon showcase. It's been a while since I've been able to say that and I am very happy to be back with these. So we are coming back with the Lothric Greatsword and this weapon is something else. It's really powerful, has a great moveset, I like this thing a lot. It's honestly one of my favorite Ultra Greatswords in this game. So, let's get started with the basics. This weapon requires 24 strength and 16 dexterity in order to wield. Its physical base damage is 262 and its lightning base is 174. It has a D scaling in strength, a C scaling in dexterity, and no faith scaling. So, this is one of the few weapons in the game that has an inherent elemental scaling, or rather inherent elemental base damage, with no scaling in either faith or intelligence. And on top of that, it actually has the ability to be both buffed and, and infused. So this thing can do some pretty crazy damage. With its moveset as well, you can actually get really high counter hits. It does benefit from the Leo Ring in that respect. So with those two-handed R2s, you can deal some devastating damage, which is always, always a good thing. So with this weapon, first and foremost, I would have to say that the biggest pro would definitely be its damage output. It's really, really good. I mean, there's no other way to say it. Its ability to deal damage and hit very high damaging hits is, you know, it's phenomenal. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Other than that, other pros would be the fact that it does actually have the stomp weapon skill. Uh, with that stomp, you actually do block with the weapon on the first portion of the uh, of the skill before you actually do your R2. So that can be used in a pinch if you're two-handing, if someone's going to come at you. If you think they're going to continue attacking after, then by all means you stomp, block with that, and then follow up with an R1 or an R2 at that point. You can do some pretty good work if you time it right. It's a little bit tricky to do, it takes a little bit of work to get used to. But once you get used to it, then you can actually do some really, really nice things with it. Other than that, other major pros of the weapon would definitely be the hyper armor that it has. It's an ultra great sword, so it should be expected. It's nothing unique to this weapon. However, it's still something worth noting. And, you know, it's something to always be careful of when you're fighting against it. You don't want to go for hit trades with this weapon because of the hyper armor and because of its damage output. And for most people, when they're using it, they will go for hit trade because that's what the weapon excels at. Simple as that. Other than that, it's pretty straightforward. The fact that it can be buffed is always a good thing, especially with the inherent elemental damage. Throwing lightning blade on there, that's always a good thing. Or even infusing it, that will work well as well. So really, if you're going with a faith quality build of sorts, then this weapon is definitely going to be right up your alley. Otherwise, it does perfectly well on a standard quality build, or even a standard faith build, because with a faith build, you'll still probably have a decent amount of strength, probably nothing really over 25, 30, but you need to have the ability to use some weapons, and this one would probably fit the bill for that as well, and when infused with lightning, of course, it will actually have an A scaling in that, so that's something, again, to keep in mind. Now, the cons of this weapon. It's got nothing overly unique as far as the cons are concerned. It is an ultra great sword, so it will be slow. That should be expected. It's really easy for people with faster weapons to maneuver around it. And aside from that, you know, it's it's pretty straightforward as far as the cons are concerned. You know, it is what it is. At this point, there's nothing really more to say about it. It's slow, the attacks are devastating. It's a good weapon overall, and I really do enjoy it. But you really need to be careful and mix up your attacks, otherwise they will dodge you all day long. And on that note, free aiming is something that is always helpful to do. Going for hit trades, like I mentioned earlier, is something that's always helpful to do. So if you're going to be using this weapon, try that. Especially the unlocking and going for the uh, unlock free aimed hits. Sometimes they'll work out, other times, like this guy did here, they can get you into trouble. If they are expecting it, then that's something you need to be very careful of, because it will be very easy to punish even still. But other than that, it is a relatively straightforward weapon. 
It's got nothing really too terribly special aside from the fact that it does have that lightning damage and that it can actually be buffed or infused. So really, it's pretty much a straightforward greatsword. It's nothing unique as far as the moveset. Other greatswords have the same moveset. What it really comes down to is the damage types and the total attack rating that it has. Very powerful weapon, good on a lot of builds, really fun to use. So, that's that. Either way though guys, I hope you all enjoyed this video, found it helpful in one way or another. Please like, subscribe, and all of that good stuff, and I will see you guys next time.